Greetings. I know I've been away for a while, but I'm finally doing another review. This time of the very, very much classic novel, Dracula by Bram Stoker. I'll start by saying that I read the book once, well, half of the book once, when I was a lot younger. It must have been about 12 or 13. And back then I remember very much liking it. I don't know why I stopped in the middle. I just sort of couldn't be bothered to continue for some reason. But the first half of it, reading it now, is just as atmospheric as I remembered. A great setup with Jonathan Harker making his way to Castle Dracula. And then the slow decline of Lucy Westenera, or however you pronounce her name, I don't know. At the beginning, the post-beginning, if you will. Dracula as a vampire is a lot more formidable than the vampires in fiction now. And I'm not just talking about the sparkly ones in Twilight, but pretty much any popular vampire, like the ones in Buffy, for example, they're all quite easily dispatched, despite having technically less weaknesses, because Dracula has so many powers, as well as more weaknesses than the average vampire. He can turn into large dogs and he can control the weather, sort of, and he has a lot of beasts under his control, apart from horses, because according to the footnotes in my edition, horses are more human than the beasts Dracula controls. They're sort of on our side in, in the eternal war between the supernatural and the natural. So Dracula creates a great villain, and for most of the story, he's quite a formidable character. Although I would criticise the book because towards the end it becomes a bit pathetic. All the human characters need to do is take out some of his hideouts and he flees. He goes. Spoilers, by the way. But it's a world-famous book, which most people know, so I don't think I really need to worry about that. He goes back to Transylvania and all that our heroes need to do is destroy a few of his boxes of earth. He's so formidable at the beginning, but so easily defeated at the end. But that's only a minor criticism, because I think he is quite a successful villain in this story. But I do have other criticisms. For starters, the end of the book was very disappointing. We spend so much time building up to this big climactic good and evil battle with Dracula, and literally, spoilers again, they find some gypsies with Dracula's coffin, they fight the gypsies, and they kill Dracula in his coffin. This is in the daytime in some snow. That is the climax of the entire book. It lasts about six pages, and it's pathetic, and it's the definition of a letdown climax. It's like the end of a Moffat arc in Doctor Who. That's how disappointing it is. But it's not all about the plot, because the characters in the book are the source of good and bad things which I will go into detail on. For the good, we have Renfeld, who is by far the book's most interesting character. He makes Dracula look like, I don't know, a zombie or something, personality-wise, because he he's changes so often. He's got his world-famous fascination with eating flies, which doesn't actually last for that long. Then he becomes this incredibly sophisticated, smooth-talking, charming and disturbingly sane character who you don't really know whether to trust but he often says some during his mad spells he says some incredibly interesting things like the blood is the life i think the concept of eating people in order to gain more life is is fascinating i don't think graham stoker came up with it but whether he did or not the presentation of it in that character is fascinating well, in the sections with Renfeld, I always found myself marvelling at how atmospheric and how just really fucking intriguing it is, his his whole concept. Um, I think also the way they kill him off in the end defies expectations because you don't expect him to turn out as a good guy. But he does. He, he dies trying to defend Mina Harker from Dracula. Dracula snaps his neck because... He eventually thinks, Dracula's not my master, I will wrestle with him. There's biblical parallels there, but even without those biblical parallels, it's it's a great fitting end for a character who's, who you're never quite sure whether to trust. And usually those sort of characters, you can't trust them. That's the 
that's the climax of those arcs. But this character, he's trustworthy. He died protecting the humans. Abraham Van Helsing and I would have to say, and Dr. John Seward are both very endearing characters. Abraham Van Helsing is in all his sort of slightly Dutch idiosyncratic speech and he's he's just a very kind man. He's not the sort of formidable warrior that um popular culture portrays him. He's quite weak actually, physically. He's he's a professor, he's not a fighter, and he defeats Dracula with his mind. But he's essentially one of the novel's kindest characters. And then there's Dr. Seward, who is probably the closest thing the novel has to a primary protagonist, who is a little bit bland, but audience identification characters always are. And I think he, despite some of-the-time treatment towards people like Renfeld, or he dismisses him as a madman quite often, even though he's supposed to be a psychiatrist, um... He's he's a decent audience identification character, and that may not sound like a massive compliment. When I get onto the other characters in the book, it will sound like one. Other than the two doctors of medicine, there is not one likable character in this book. I'm sorry, but they're just boring and or horrible or both. There's Lucy Westernero, who is shallow and pathetic, and basically the model of a Victorian heroine. It makes Clarissa Harlow look like the woman from Kill Bill. That's how pathetic she is. She just does nothing and then dies. No matter how the men who loved her stand around weeping, we could, we don't care that she's dead. Bram Stoker does not do anything to make us care. Then there's Jonathan Harker, who, as my lecturer says, is quite a pathetic character. Even Van Helsing says, oh, he's a man. He's very masculine. But he's not. No one really thinks he is. They just say that because he does do one thing, which is brave. He climbs down the, around the castle to find Dracula's coffin. But after that, he hides in his wife's dress and gets ill all the time. And he's not a very likable or interesting character. He's quite pathetic, really. And he's not even very interesting as, on top of that. Then there's Arthur, Lord Godalming, who has basically no personality other than the husband slash fiancé of the dead woman. And then there's the stereotypical American Quincy Morris, who's basically just a stereotypical American who goes in and says American things about vampires and then goes out. Yeah. Um, although America hadn't permeated culture at that point, so it's probably the equivalent of a stereotypical Brit turning up in an American film. And that kind of thing happens all the time, so I can't really seriously criticise the novel. And then possibly the most troubling character in this book is Mina Harker. She's actually a really likeable character. I know I said none of the characters apart from the two Doctors are likeable, but she's probably even more likeable than them. It's just what the, how the book treats her that I don't find myself agreeing with. Because in often in 19th century novels, there's one or maybe a couple of female characters who are sort of ahead of their time in their proto-feminist type mindset. Sort of like Marion Halcom from The Women in White is a good example. And Mina Harker sort of starts out as one of those. She seems more capable and more intelligent than her husband. But then the book sort of treats her as a damsel in distress, then treats her as a feminist, proto-feminist type thinking woman again, and then treats her as a damsel in distress again. And it's never really sure what to do with her. And this is a problem, I think, in writing. Even if it wasn't sexist, which it is, it's very inconsistent and poor writing. And I think Mina Harker's really done a disservice to by the writing. Because she starts off the book as an intelligent woman and she ends the book as basically another Lucy. She's weak. She relies on Van Helsing for everything. And she spends most of her time getting hypnotised. Not very helpful, really. So I've said a lot of negative things about this book. There's a lot of poor characterization, and the plot starts off well and sort of peters off into nothingness at the end. 
very much like a Stephen Moffat arc in Doctor Who. It's probably the best comparison I can think of. But I think the book is saved by a few key things. The atmosphere and some of the descriptions, very much towards the beginning rather than at the end, are spot on. They're fucking amazing. I can really feel it sort of rolling from the page like a fog when I read it. And then it's also saved by its few brilliant characters like Renfold. I mean, just Renfold alone would put its rating up quite a lot because he is a fucking great character. But even The Professor and Dr. John Seward are worth reading. So because of these things, I would say it's not a bad book. It just has a lot of shortcomings. So in my typical fashion of giving it not an American rating, but an English one, I will give it a C, which is sort of in the middle. Never really given a, a lower rating than that. I should review more shit ones, really. <laughs>